hello, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Cole Lee. This is my talk. Uh, it is about Bcash FS, uh, which was merged into upstream since version 6.7, I think. So for this talk, uh, we have uh, one hour. So I think the time is enough. So for any question, if you want to ask, just in interrupt me anytime. Yeah. Uh, I work in labs. I maintain the Bcash for the mainline Linux kernel and uh, the MD, DM, MVD, the Bcash for SUSE. Uh, also, I, I watch in the Bcash FS development for years since uh, Kent switched his focus on the file system development. And uh, for, for this talk, uh, I, I just only focus on the very basic functionality of Bcash FS. And uh, I will introduce the core uh, data structure design for the Bcash FS that B3. I will introduce the detail how to uh, implement a high performance B3. Uh, Bcash FS. Bcash FS is a file system. Uh, he's created by Ken Overstreet. And also, Ken was the creator of uh, Linux Bcash. After the Linux Bcache merged into kernel, since I think around 3.10, and Kent felt the infrastructure of the code, the B tree, the high performance B tree, was quite good to implement a file system on top of it. And then Kent started to work on a new file system named Bcache FS. For now, it's uh, I think he's, he started his work around uh, 2010. So uh, several months before this code merged into Linux mainline, it's more than 10 years. Yeah. So the, the, the Bcache FS, that's a copy and write file system with uh, several modern designs. Uh, first, uh, he is a copy and write file system both on metadata and data. And uh, uh, Bcache FS has a catch tier. That's the most distinguished part from other existing file system. And also, uh, Bcache FS does the checksum on both data and uh, metadata. And uh, of course, uh, it supports multiple devices. So with the multiple devices support, uh, Bcache FS can do the erasure coding and uh, replication. Replication means uh, the one data can be can have um, multiple copies among different devices, and uh, also he can do uh, device labels and uh, targets. I will show what is uh, uh, device labels and targets later for the Bcash FS. Also, Bcash FS supports the snapshot and the subvolumes uh, because of the B tree. Uh, it is a little bit simple, I think, uh, comparing to ButterFS. And also on the document, uh, Bcash FS supports uh, encryption, uh, compression, ref link, uh, extend attribute, access control list, uh, quota. But uh, I, I don't think the code is very well at this moment, maybe still under development. And uh, also, uh, like, B, like ButterFS, uh, Bcash also has. Uh, non copy and write mode yeah so uh it seems like very familiar with the features uh, i mean comparing to butterfs but uh, this is not another butterfs yeah and uh, i still remember that's the uh, 2010 year 2010 the lsf in i don't remember where just the many at that time uh Almost everyone talk about uh, ButterFS, and uh, I, I see someone said uh, that's Obama for a system at that moment. Uh, yeah, so Bcash FS <laughs> is not another Obama for a system. Uh, uh, it cannot do everything, uh, but uh, there it does have some. It does have some technology uh, differ from existing. File systems. I think uh, 
One is the high performance and the low latency B3. And I will introduce the details in this talk. Another one is the, the transaction layer. The transaction layer, indeed, I mentioned that several years ago when I, uh, when I uh, give a talk for Bcash Journal. For Bcash Journal, the data structure and the algorithm is very similar. But uh, for Bcash FS, uh, there are four journals, not only one. And uh, yeah, better design, for example, also support the space reservation to avoid the deadlock for, B, uh, for the Bcash FS journal. Uh, yeah, but uh, at this moment, uh, Bcash FS do not, does not support file system level transaction. Uh, the transaction is only for the B3 level. Yeah, this is the basic usage. Uh, so most of the utilities of uh, Bcash FS belongs to the project uh, Bcash FS tools. And uh, the program BcacheFS just does most of the operations. Uh, originally, this program was written in C code, and uh, then uh, Kent start to write a wrapper to call the C code and uh, start to transfer the code in, from C to Rust. Now the main code is in, in Rust. Just the library still uh, stay in C. And to format a file system, we can use this. Yeah, bcachefs format. Uh, here is the device list. Uh, here I use a MADM SSD and a hard drive, two devices. And the, there are three options. One is a foreground target. This is how the bcachefs can target a, hard, uh, a device or hard drive. Uh, the foreground target means all IOs should go into the foreground target firstly. And uh, second is uh, the promote target, also the SSD. The promote target means if the read on the foreground target missed, then the data should be promote to the uh, promote target. That, that's similar to some uh, read cache. Yeah. If the cache missing, just load the data into the recache. And the last option is a background target. Background target, just a, a, a normal storage target to leverage the copies of the data. Uh, why call it a background? Because uh, for uh, read back mode, because Bcache FS, of course, uh, support cache. For read back mode, the data will firstly go, to in, go into the foreground target, and in the spare time, there is the background thread, do the data balance, so, and then move the data from the foreground to background. For mount, uh, for mount the file system, uh, we need to, we need to uh, provide the file system type, and uh, <coughs> all the devices here, if we don't use the BcacheFS program, and just to use the standard mount, we need to provide both the devices list and the, the file system type. And uh, yeah. So you have to provide all the devices on mount? Uh, if we use the standard mount command. Uh, for the Bcache FS program, uh, we can provide uh, the FS UID and the Bcache FS program can use the UID to find all the devices and give it to the mount. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for the background target, uh, we, we should know that uh, there might be multiple, multiple background targets. So uh, if uh, the data is uh, set to have uh, several copies, then the data can be uh, balanced to different background targets with uh, more uh, copies, just like, uh, like uh, something like a read. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, because uh, the Bcache FS, the idea was originally from Bcache. Uh, of course, we support some cache uh, mode. Uh, typically, there are two cache modes support it. One is a read back mode, one is a write through mode. For the read back mode, 
just like uh, the previous example to format the file system. We specify the foreground target as SSD, and we specify the per mode target as SSD, and use the hard drive as a background target. Yeah. And then that's a standard right back mode. And for the right through mode, uh, we need another option called durability. Durability means uh, the capability of a durability of this target device. If we set uh, durability to zero, set zero to this value, that means uh, I, I don't trust this device. This device has no durability. So do not count replication numbers on this device. So after, um, after the data moved to the background target, then this copy on the foreground target with the durability zero means uh, the data can be discarded at any time. So it is not reliable. So by this uh, option, the behavior, in fact, that's a right through. Yeah. And uh, so it's not like uh, Bcash, there is no read through, no read through cache, just the right through. Yeah. And uh, there's some uh, uh, special optimization that if the background target is a read, yeah, for example, the read, read one or read 10 or read five, so we can set the durability to this target, uh, to this target to two. So that means uh, the target itself already, have, already has uh, enough durability, so it's, we don't need to do extra durability on the file system level. So the mount, yeah, this is, this is an example that the young Kara just asked. Uh, if with the, standard, with the standard mount command, we need to list all the devices. And uh, if with the bcachefs command, uh, we can either list all the devices or just use the file system ID. And also we can mount the file system uh, with part of the devices. Uh, just with a uh, degree option. And there is another option, I call, maybe called a really degree. I, I don't remember exactly. That means that uh, you, can, you can force to mount the, the, the file system with just the limited part of the devices, but and you, you are aware of to take uh, the risk that the data will be corrupted or lost. For U-mount, uh, U-mount, I, I do the test that uh, after a very heavy write, the U-mount uh, takes time from several seconds to around one minute, maybe. I, I, I feel that <coughs> it seems like uh, just uh, it takes time to synchronize some uh, metadata uh, from the memory to the SSD, maybe. Yeah. So now I will talk about uh, copy and write allocation. Uh, the, the, the basic unit for Bcache to allocate space is a bucket. Uh, Bcache, uh, Bcache FS allocate uh, the metadata, the between node and the data, they're all in the bucket size. So uh, normally, uh, the bucket size from uh, 128 KB to two megabytes. So that means the, the B tree node of uh, Bcache FS is quite large. It's quite large. And the, the, the B tree node, because the B tree node will occupy the whole bucket uh, on a disk and in a memory, both. That means uh, in a memory, if we need to load the B tree node, we need to allocate a linear uh, continuous address space, not physically, but uh, in, the, in address, uh, linear address, it needs to be continuous uh, to allocate the memory, yeah. And uh, for data, the, after we allocate a bucket, if we need to write a new data on it, after record the, the offset and the length in the B tree, the data just append, appendly, the written 
inside the bracket. So that's, uh, the design is uh, naturally good to implement a copy and write data on metadata. For the metadata in between nodes, uh, space is also apparently allocated inside the bracket. That means if you want to insert, uh, if you want to insert the B key into the B tree, the first you, you need to decide, uh, you, you need to write the key into a B set. And inside the B tree <coughs> node, there are multiple B sets. And uh, the B set is written into the disk, into the bucket uh, in the append mode. Yeah. And the, before the B set is written into the memory, yes, it can, the, the new key can insert in the memory with the proper location to keep the, all the keys in the uh, strictly ordered. But uh, once it is written into the media, so no new key will be added into this B set. Uh, the, the code will open another new, new one. Then this B set will be turned into read-only mode. So at any moment, uh, inside one bucket, inside one uh, between node, only one B set can be readable. The rest, it, they are all read-only. So, uh, uh, so for the, and uh, if uh, the BKs and the B sites occupied uh, large enough space to reach a threshold, and, uh, then the B tree node will be split. So uh, normally we want to occupy the, all the space inside the B tree node. Uh, the B tree node will be split, I think, it's uh, two thirds two-thirds of the whole space uh, of the bracket, and then it will be split it to avoid uh, extra uh, troubles like uh, space, no space dead, uh, deadlock. And delete, delete is special also. Uh, delete, it depends, depends on uh, whether the key is in the read-only B set or in the read-write B set. If in the read-write B set, the delete just the modify the existing key in place. But if uh, the key is in the read-only B set, so we want to change the read-only B site, the key inside that, we just append another key with a delete type in the write uh, in the writable B site. That's delete. Uh, also, I will I will mention a little about the deletion later. Okay, now I will start to introduce the core part, the core data structure of uh, uh, BcacheFS. And I think this is the most special part uh, between the BcacheFS and the other four system. Uh, that is the high performance B tree. Uh, yeah, the high performance B tree. Uh, the the BcacheFS B tree node size is a one bucket. Typically, it's a uh, uh, for, for me, that I, I think that the default size is uh, 256 KB. That's much bigger than the, the B tree node among the ESP4 or the uh, XFS. So uh, that means uh, because the node is quite large, so the depth of the tree is quite small. Uh, in most of my testing, I see that the the, the tree depth is always two. Uh, almost no chance to, to reach three, yeah. Just uh, sometimes, because uh, from beginning, the, the root of the tree is in line. And uh, just several times, and uh, uh, the root is almost full, and the, the root of the beetroot will split into a whole bucket. So that's large enough. So, uh, so far, I, I don't see a Bcache FS B tree with three levels, only two. Yeah, that's big enough. And the, for the B key, uh, the B key, that's the key and the value pair that we do the search inside the B tree. The B key search insert deletion operation are critical to the overall, file, uh, overall performance for the file system, especially for the search. For the search. Uh, okay, I will introduce the detail. Uh, this is the structure 
of a B tree node. <coughs> this one, the structure of a B tree node. And for BcacheFS, the structure in memory and on disk, they are same. They are same. Because uh, there are many tricks. If you read the code, you'll find many tricks. So in order to make the tricks work, work for both big Indian and the little Indian. So uh, we can see from the header. The header, when defined uh, when, when define the on disk format, there's the if uh, big Indian, if little Indian, something like this. So uh, yeah, the byte order will always uh, be similar, be similar because even there is a structure embedded into structure. So it'll always be similar on both big and uh, little Indian. That's quite different. That's quite different uh, uh, from other file systems. Be because for other file systems, I know that always little Indian. And uh, when, when we do the I.O., we do some uh, uh, Indian to CPU order uh, conversion. But for Bcache, FS, they are same. Yeah. Uh, this is a, this is a bucket size. And uh, here, at the very beginning, that's the B-tree header to represent some uh, uh, information about this B-tree node. And then here is the B-set, B-set, B-set. Uh, because the, the, the keys are not directly stored into the tree. Uh, they are grouped with B-set. Yeah. And uh, the B-set contained all the writable, uh, all the all the writable keys, and once the B set flushed onto the media, and then this B set uh, will turn into a read-only model. And here is the free space. Here is the free space inside the B tree node, and here is also free space inside the B set, uh, because the B set is aligned to the size uh, of the B cache FS. Uh, block size. That's normally it's uh, right now it's a 4K. It used might be a 2K, but default now it's a 4K. So if uh, if this B site is necessary to be flushed, so it, it it's possible that there is the, some uh, spare space less than the file system block. Yeah. And uh, another thing we need to keep in keep in mind that. For the B site, uh, if they're not uh, a dead site, if they're, uh, they're just uh, uh, available into this round, so the content will be identical that on this copy and in memory copy, they're just uh, identical. There's no some uh, byte order uh, conversion. Yeah. And uh, the, inside the B-set, here's the B-set header, and then that's the B key stored inside the B-set. And the B key is in uh, packet format. That means uh, some bits field just packed together to store the information to just the, to make the, the storage space more efficient. So uh, we cannot directly read the, the, the value into the packed key. And there are several helpers that we can use to convert the key into different type. Maybe the, the key is for the inode, maybe the key is for a, a, a split extend or something. We, we need to use some other helpers to read it. <coughs> Yeah, and for a single B site, the all B keys inside the B set are strictly ordered from uh, small to bigger. And once the B set is flushed onto disk, it's a written B site. And insert delete only happens in the unwritten B set, and only one unwritten B site. For uh, for B for B cache, the, there are four there are four uh, sets. Active sets. One is uh, uh, unwritten set, and the rest it are written sets. For Bcache FS, uh, there are three uh, sets. Uh, two 
uh, written, written, already written set. One is unwritten one. So all the B key insert, delete, or modification just they happened on the uh, unwritten B set. When a B set is large enough, uh, so the normal binary search of a key uh, will be low. I know that for EST4, we, we just use the, the binary search, the jump forward or backward into the ordered keys. Uh, but it's fine because the, the extended tree for the EST4 is relatively small, but for Bcache FS, uh, the node is quite large. So the B set also can be very large. So for such a, a binary search, jump forward, backward is not so friendly for the cache or memory. Yeah. Say that the B set is at maximum four kilobytes, like one block or <coughs> more. Oh, 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 so B set B set can be larger. Yeah, yeah very large. It can be very large. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so that's I misunderstood what you said. And uh, second question, when you are speaking about B set, so so do I understand right that the B set is kind of like a set of changes to the current B3 node, like that there are multiple written B sets, yeah, in, in possibly, yeah. and like the changes kind of accumulate across all the B sets, so, uh, or only the last one actually is yeah. the current one. Uh, let, let me see that. So, if the, because it, the B sets are written in append mode, so if the space, the free space is not enough, and they reach a threshold, then they need to use another new bucket to dump all the existing uh, B set and the keys into another node. And uh, during the dump, during dump, indeed that's not uh, on purpose dump, just a read in and find it's large enough and the flush out. Uh, when read in, uh, the, the, all the stuff need to be reinitialized and that means that all the active B set read in, then there will be a, a, merge, a merge sort to sort all the three B sets into one and then flush to the new node. And then there is one written uh, B cache, uh, written B set. And in memory, there's a new unwritten B set to receive a new modification, something like this. Yeah. Yeah. And the, for the for the new created file system, maybe uh, in the between node, there there will be multiple uh, B sets. But when the time goes, uh, because the merge and dump, merge and dump, so normally uh, there there will be a very large set for the first one, and a very small set for the last one. It's just a freshly dumped. Uh, the previous uh, unwritten site be, become the written site. And uh, the, the middle one just in the medium size, something like this, yeah. And uh, because even the B site can be quite large. So uh, do the binary search inside uh, the array, jump forward, backward, is not uh, friendly for the cache. So, uh, there is another auxiliary binary search tree created to accelerate this search. I, I also presume you may use this because you have like multi, these possibly several B sets across which you need to search. Then you possibly this search tree can help with uh, like searching across multiple B sets or not? It's, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, the the auxiliary tree. It's for the it's for the per B set, so it, it is possible that for each B set we can get a result a result from the search, yeah. and then combine them, mm -hmm. Con still compare them. Uh, it's easy to compare because uh, uh, the rule is uh, the, the the later one is always the nearest one, yeah. so they just compare the the memory address. So the, 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 the larger memory address of the key means uh, this is the last one and this is the nearest one. Yeah, and then they compare the, the, 
the extent, maybe the extent is different. So then do some uh, cut front or cut later, something like this, and got the result. So, uh, okay, this is a multiple BSAS in uh, B-Tree node. Yeah. As I said, uh, the later case always uh, priori to the previous case. That means if two keys with uh, uh, find in uh, same B site or in different B site, uh, always we the, the key with the elder with the bigger memory address that's the nearest one. And uh, so. The, even the B set is written, is flushed into the media and uh, turned into the read only B set, it's still in the memory. Unless, until the whole uh, between node in the memory, the cache is uh, shrunk. And the next time, when we, if the code need to access this uh, between node again, then we need to load it from the media into memory. And during the load, there is the merge sort. So all the previous multiple B sets will be merged into one. Yeah, the, in this example, the gray part is the dead B set. That means uh, uh, the between node is still referenced but the in-memory copy, the active B sets, it's here, not here. They are not included in memory. And uh, for these two B sets and uh, this this uh, are written B sets that are uh, writable. These two are written B sets. They are not writable, so they may be merged into one and uh, flushed to the disk. And then this one become to the first uh, unwritten and read-only B set, and all the keys are merged and uh, still in the restrictedly increase order it. Okay, now uh, it's a search in the B-Tree node. Search, uh, search in the B-Tree node that we need to search each B set. And uh, it, it is possible that we got multiple uh, results. And then we just compare the memory address of each result and uh, finally de decide, uh, decide which one is new. Yeah. And uh, if uh, there are overlaps, what you do? We just uh, uh, currently we just choose the the the, the maximum shared <laughs> shared range and return this range to the caller, and then the caller just remove the friend part and the search uh, search the key with the the new start with the rest rested lines and research it again. So uh, yeah, this is the type in the code. They have two type. One is a read-only uh, auxiliary tree. The one is a read-write auxiliary tree. Yeah. For for the read-only one, uh, they can have uh, two, and for the read-write, uh, a mask, uh, just only one. Yeah. And uh, with the auxiliary tree search tree, the B key search into the set can be much faster. Uh, I will explain why. Okay, and uh, I think from this page in, and the following several pages, uh, uh, this m might be the only document explaining how it work on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, that uh, I don't understand the code for years. Uh, but fortunately, just uh, someday, suddenly, I realized how it works. Yeah. The basic idea for an auxiliary tree is the key inside the B set 
can be grouped by the size named the catch line. This is a logical concept, just a range. Uh, for example, here this is the beside. We just divide it into catch line, catch line, catch line. It's just a, a logical concept. And <laughs> each catch line has a start key. Start key means the first big key started in this catch line. Uh, it might be that the, on the offset zero, and uh, maybe uh, eight byte shift later. Uh, and uh, all the catch line key, they're organized in, I don't know how to pronounce this, uh, in, in the in Zinger or some blah, sword tree. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, just use them into this binary search tree. This one is a very cache friendly because for this search, we only do the uh, forward access. We don't jump back. So, and uh, it, it is predictable that uh, which part of the memory we will access later. So even in the code, we can call the prefetch to load that part into the uh, CPU cache previously. And uh, because uh, we, we only record, the, we only use the single key to represent this range. So the search range will decrease, will decrease to uh, one eighth or one sixteenth. So the, the, the search range will reduce a lot. That means that if we hit one of the catch line key, that means it might be possible that the one is the key in this range. So first, we just uh, compare in the binary tree with the catch line key. And it, if it hits, then we search inside this catch line. So by, by, by this method, we can decrease quite a lot of the search range. Search scope. Yeah. And uh, now let me show what is the data structure of BKey. Uh, the BKey in binary search tree is converted into float, float number format. Why to convert it? Because the original key size is a little bit large. So uh, we want to keep most, uh, as, as many as we can, the, the keys to, to fill it into one catch line. Then uh, we, we don't need to access multiple extra time to the memory when we search in the auxiliary tree. This is the, this is the original B key data structure. We can see that uh, this is B key underscore packed. This is B key. Uh, why uh, there are two data structures? This one, this one is used to store uh, in the media. So it, it is packed. The packed means uh, just uh, make the storage be more uh, efficiency. And uh, this one, this one is used in the, in the programming. Mm, so we can access things inside uh, without the pact. For this one, we need uh, some uh, helpers to act them. And uh, the, 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 the magic part is uh, we can see that for the first, the first uh, three bytes, they are same. They are same. So most of the cases, uh, if we don't need to access the following keys, following keys, uh, the code can just cast a BK structure to the BK pact and the reference uh, the, the first several members directly without any conversion. Uh, this is quite common for the Bcache or the Bcache FS code, coding style. Many things like this. Yeah. So they don't need to do some uh, data conversion or data copy. And uh, here, for this one, Structure P, POSP, this is a position structure. 
uh, this is the key of the key value pair. Yeah. When we do the search, we compare, we compare this one. And uh, after this structure, the following, that's the, 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 the value part. That's a very variable length value part. The length uh, is here, size. Yeah. So, the, the, so the real key size is uh, not in this size. It's more because the following, there are pointers. We call it the pointers of, of values. Yeah. So this one is big. So, uh, so then we need to convert the B key into a more compact format. So uh, in memory, they can be filled into a CPU catch line, mm, maybe more. And also because uh, the auxiliary search tree occupied extra memory, they, they also want the extra memory to be minimized. <laughs> okay, I, I, here is uh, uh, how the float format key in the search tree works. We can see that uh, this is the logical catch line inside uh, B set. So here is the boundary. Here is the boundary. And uh, this is the boundary part. This is the actual boundary. And uh, this area belongs to the n minus one catch set. This area belongs to catch line n. And uh, this is the previous key belong to catch line n minus one. We can see it because the length of the key is a variable. So the, the first uh, key in the catch line n does not start from an offset zero. It starts from uh, uh, several bytes later because the, the previous space still belongs to the, to the keys in last catch line. And then we just need to find a boundary. The boundary, uh, the functionality is the, the boundary need to represent a gap just uh, after, the after the previous B key and the before or equal the first B key of the next catch line. If we can find uh, such number and uh, use this number to be the key in the auxiliary search tree, that's enough. So how to do this? Uh, we can see that here, here is the key offset. This, this is a node in the auxiliary tree. This is the key offset to indicate uh, where the key is inside the catch line. And the, the, the boundary, the boundary, the, the boundary calculation, the boundary is, uh, this is uh, mantissa, mantissa of the float number format, and this is exponent. And uh, the mantissa, it's uh, 16 bits, and the right is shift by the indicative of uh, exponent. And then we got the boundary. If the boundary, just the, the, the value of the boundary, just between the two keys, it works. Then we can use this boundary uh, to, to compare in the auxiliary tree search. And if we, we fail to find a such a boundary, it's possible if uh, the, the two keys, uh, their address are very close, we, we are not able to find a proper boundary. Uh, yeah, we will, we will uh, mark here, a uh, mark exponent with a quite large number, means a uh, field. And then in the search code, if it's failed, just go back to fetch the memory, uh, because uh, the search in the auxiliary tree just in the cache. Just go back to fetch the memory, <coughs> fetch the memory to, to read, to read the exact location here, yeah, to, to, to do the comparing. And uh, the magic is here. How to 
find the mantis. We just compare the, the key, the previous key and the current key, their, their value. And uh, normally, the high bits are quite same. So we just find, the, we, we do the XOR, find the first bit, they're different. So we just store the rested part into the float format. So and ignore, <coughs> ignore the previous one because they, they're all the same. And for the rest part, the, because the mantisa is 16-bit, maybe for the, in this example, it's a bit 23. So we need to do some uh, like the 23 minus 16, and the, uh, the result is seven. We zone a seven to exponent and ignore the lower seven bits. So the mantisa is the bits content between bits eight to 23. And uh, there is the exponent is seven and the offset is one because uh, it starts at uh, this, the it start as the first eight byte offset. Yeah. And we do the uh, comparison in the auxiliary search tree. Uh, there's search key here. We just do what we use this, the value. This is a full format value, and do the right shifting by the exponent value that we want to search in current node, and then cast only the, the lowest uh, 16 bits. That's the mantisa. And then we compare the mantisa. We compare the mantisa calculated for the search key and uh, the current node in the auxiliary tree, the search tree. We want to compare. We compare the mantisa. If the mantisa, uh, yeah, if uh, it's bigger, if the current node bigger than the search key's mantisa, that means uh, maybe, maybe uh, the one of the key is in this range. So we just need to do the linear search inside this range. If not, we need to just search, iterate to the next node. Yeah, and inside, inside uh, the catch line, because now we, we know which catch line. And just inside the catch line, just do the linear search. No binary search anymore, just the linear search. Uh, because the author believed that uh, uh, all the data in the CPU cache, so the linear iteration is fast enough than the jump back or forward. Yeah, and uh, for this is for the written BSET. For the unwritten BSET, uh, it's very expensive to be, to maintain a, a binary tree dynamically. So it's simple, just a linear table. Just to maintain a table. Still, we need to maintain a table. Uh, but to maintain a linear table, it's much easier than maintaining uh, uh, the binary tree. Yeah. And the cost is uh, for the auxiliary tree, uh, we need uh, around 1% extra memory. And uh, the, the, the search reduce will uh, reduce to 1 eighth or 1 16th. And for the boundary search here, for the boundary search, there is a chance that uh, the, the calculation, uh, the, the boundary calculation will fail. And uh, from uh, the data from Kent, the failure rate is, is around 1%. That is uh, the two key, uh, too close. We can't find a proper uh, boundary, can fit in the float number format and uh, distinguish the gap. So, and uh, Kent think the 1% of the failure, that's uh, adorable. Okay, uh, that's a search. And the insert, I also, I also mentioned that. Insert only happens in the uh, right BSAT, and the insert should be in the strictly ordered position. That means uh, if we insert a key, we need to move all the keys behind it, the, the location move. It, it's still expensive, yeah. And for delete, delete, uh, there are two situations. One is uh, if the key in a read only, uh, sets. So then we just add one more key 
to the uh, right ball, to the right ball PSAT to indicate uh, the previous key will be deleted. If the key, the deleting key, just in the right ball PSAT, it's fine. We just uh, remove it. But if uh, we only remove part of the key range, we also need to add a key with the delete type and indicate the, the, the deleted uh, offset and the range, something like this. Is that for punching holes? Oh, no, 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 it's not punching holes. Uh, punching holes, that, that's another thing. This is just for the B-tree itself. Okay, uh, we can stop the stream. <laughs>